everybody. Looks like we are live. How is everybody today? We are taking a new direction. So this is going to be fun. And I look forward to hanging out with you on this Saturday. So let's see who we have today. Looks like we have Mr. Steve Lang. How are you today, sir? All the way from the UK. Mike DeLoach, how are you? All the way from Atlanta area in Georgia. We have Wendy from Dallas area in Texas. Great to see you, Wendy. Great to see you, Mike. We have Colette all the way from Wisconsin. Great to see you. We have Mr. Color Graphics, which is Roy out of New Jersey. Always a pleasure to see you, sir. And so, some interesting things today. First interesting thing is I'm going to get a glass of a little sip of water here because I'm dying of thirst. We have eight concurrent viewers already. So that's really nice on a Saturday night when you guys could be doing anything else. So you might be asking yourself, how did I get the line drawing onto the board? And how am I getting the magnets to stick onto wood? So those are two very interesting. Hey, Lisa, how are you? Maldives, baby, great to see you. How you been? Zavi, how are you? How's everything? And uh, Total Pain, uh, John Payne. So John Payne is from upstate New York. Zavi is from Arizona. And Maldives, baby, is from New York. Uh, I believe you're in New York State or New York City. I'm not sure, Lisa, but I'm really very happy to see you. So that is so very cool. So let me change the this here. I have to pull this down just a little bit so we see more of it. There we go. Okay, so very simple line drawing and how I transferred that line drawing was with uh, Sorrel paper. I printed out my drawing and then with Sorrel paper I went ahead and applied it. So very, very cool. So that was a bit of a, a new technique for myself. Oh, new NYC. All right. Very cool. Very cool, Lisa. And so... So right now, here we are. Let me see if I can get the reference image for you. So image and go to PC pictures. Nope, I'm going to go here, then go to pictures, then go to pastel live. This is the young lady we will be painting today, this next couple of weeks. So. Very nice to work with uh, for anatomical uh, studies and everything. So you got to love that. So that is really a lot of fun. And let me make myself smaller. Okay. And very cool. Okay. So I have a piece of acetate that I cut with uh, my Cameo 4. And as you can see, I have this perfectly set up. This is on marble dust treated wood panel, marble dust and gesso. And I treated that so uh, it takes an unlimited amount of pastel layers. So that was given to me by, by Harvey and was given to Harvey by his student and so his teacher and so on and so on. And it's an honor for me to share that with you all. So, uh, as you can see, look, the, the magnets are the best way to do it. You just put a magnet right on the other side. Make sure they're, uh, but one's negative, one's positive. And then you just, on the side, just put that on there. And this is just as good as if you were working uh, with paper. So, when you change from paper to to wood you have to change your thinking right you can't think the same you have to you have to go outside the box always go outside the box you know what i mean and uh let's see here 
I'm going to load my pastel, your favorite airbrush and mine, the Extreme Patriot Arrow. This thing's a thing of beauty. I have one to sell and one we're giving away in the month of October. And we're going to roll out more information in the coming week. Thank you, Colette, says beautiful reference. Wendy, how are you? Look how, look how far that needle comes out, you know? And that's the secret. That's the secret. And it's a .30 and I can kick anyone's butt using a .18 airbrush. And to me, that means, what does that mean? If I can get the same detail in a .30 that someone gets in a .18, that means that I have more versatility and I have a larger opening so there's less uh, less clogging, less tip dry, uh, more I can do other things such as work on backgrounds, but I can also get in there and do the tightest of details. So that is uh, one of the main thrusts of why I created it. I wanted to point I wanted to have a 0 .30 airbrush where I can beat the heck out of those using 0.18 or 0.16 or whatever. Um, and I go head to head with anybody. One, two, three, four. I'm going to put four drops of my detail mixture. And then I'm going to put four drops of water. Hey, Nameless, how are you? Don't worry, I just started. So what happened, Nameless, is... I was uh, working on the preparations for this and I was just like, there's no way I'm going to get it done in time. So I started at 8.30. Hey, Nick, how are you? Great to see you. Oh, wow. So I really appreciate you hanging out. And this is part one. And what's really cool about this is for you airbrush artists out there who are thinking about one day tackling pastel, but, you know, how does it apply to you? all that stuff. The cool thing is this is an airbrush underpainting for my for my uh, uh, the underpainting for the pastel which is really great and uh, really wild. So I'm glad you're here Nick. Thank you so much for hanging out on this Saturday. So this is definitely glasses material. Notice there's no noise, there's no air conditioning, no fans. The fan might change later, we'll see. <laughs> but we will definitely see. What I can do right now is I'm just going to work on some of the larger shapes and then I'm gonna come in a little bit more specific. So uh, right now what I'm gonna do is test this airbrush out, make sure. That when I cleaned it, I didn't leave the airbrush needle too far back. Make sure everything is operational. Looks good to me. All right, so let me get my young lady I'm painting and let's, let's get ready to rumble. Okay, so right now I'm just going to work on these large shapes here. This is going to be... This is going to be the uh, the basis, the steel girders, in where my uh, pastel painting kind of falls. You always have to have structure. Always, always, always. So, let's see. Uh, the face is lighter in the background, so I'm not going to put any tone on the face just yet. But I just want to hit these large areas. Now I'm working on wood. So it's a little bit different in the sense that if I was working on uh, paper, I, would, I wouldn't worry so much about, about spidering. But wood is hard, so it's less absorbent. And so I have to be a little bit more aware of spidering, okay? Let's see. Oh, I never airbrushed. Oh, Emma, how you doing, Emma? Great to see you. How are you? And so I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. Uh, you should try airbrushing. It's really great. Oh, thank you, Nick. I appreciate that. Yes, very in informal, right? 
Yes, definitely. So welcome and welcome uh, Nick and welcome Emma. So glad to see you. Nayla says, just done watching an awesome feed on Twitch and find you're there. You're on there too, back to back. Oh, cool. So glad you're here. And thank you for that, Wendy. And let's just, I'm just going to, I have a, a custom shield for a lot of these shapes, but I just want to establish. There we go. Now I'm very low pressure. Now, before I go in with the, you know, uh, with the airbrush, if I see that I could lighten up a certain area, why not, right? So I tend not to use these pink erasers. Believe it or not, these pink erasers leave some pink residue, so not a very good thing. This knock, which is by Tombow, is really good. It's soft, so it's not going to dig into the marble dust mixture which is good not it won't kill a surface right so that's the thing we don't want to kill the surface where it's dark where it's an edge on if it's dark you can go ahead and leave it be but where you see it's kind of bordering a light then it it's in your best interest to try and lighten it up now the sorrel paper that i use is not paper so it is a little stronger than uh let's say if you uh were to, uh, you know, use pencil, so it's not perfect. Right here, we work on her lips a little bit. I'm just going to get an overall tonal structure right now. Keeping everything light. So I'm not crazy about working on uh, pure white, but that's okay. Um, can't always get exactly what you want. So you see these little pencil lines that are in the light area? Those are the ones that got to go because they'll get in the way. Even though we're going to go over this in pastel, why start with two strikes against you if you don't need it? I'm just lightening these up. That's all I'm doing. I'm not going too crazy because I don't want to kill my my marble dust surface, right? So this is in the light area. So if I can calm that down best I can, the less it's going to actually come back to haunt me. And Wendy says, it's like a clear mask, Tim. What product are you using the mask now? This is actually acetate. I was using Mylar at one time, Wendy, but now I'm kind of, I like the uh, acetate. It's much better. So yeah, so that's basically where I'm going. Right now I'm looking at the larger kind of skull shapes right here. And I'm just, just kind of... Uh, looking at the big forms and I have everything covered but her face so now I'm looking at the frontalis uh, element of of her skull her forehead.
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up and we're going to put a different uh, set of, uh, we're going to put a different shield on here. So I'll leave that. So you see we have just something very basic, nothing too, too intricate. So what you're going to see here, you're not going to see anywhere else and uh, which is cool because what other live streamers like Steve Leahy what you see what where he does you don't see anywhere else either so it's great that you know different artists are giving you a whole different point of view which I love I'm just going to this is the eyes, nose, and mouth, which is really interesting. It's really, you can see I have it drawn, so it's not like I need this, but I just want to give my, my painting a little structure, that's all, right? Nothing wrong with a little more structure. And that's basically what I'm doing here. Just a little more structure. So first thing I'm going to do is apply my first magnet just to, and then we'll put one over here. And now that I have these two here, I can try and line this up a little bit better. Okay. I want those eyes lined up perfectly so that I'm gonna pretty much keep right now and I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're gonna work on the eyes so let me come over here I'm gonna start with the eye on camera left and let's see if I could hold that down with a brush and lower that air pressure just a tad I do have to worry about underspray. So an overspray, so I'm being very light and very gentle. This is basically for me to give myself a little more structure because if I'm working straight with the airbrush, I won't exactly get the edges that I'm looking for. Maybe I'll just work on this a little bit. Actually, I can leave this off. And then I want to make sure that I find the nose. So even though I just want to make sure I get it perfect in the spots where I'm working. So right now I'm working on the bottom of the nose and the cast shadow of the, uh, of the nose. So let me pull this over. There we go. So my, my main thing is to just make sure that this is really solid. I'm just looking you guys having some good conversation which is great always love to see that and let me make sure that this is absolutely perfect to my standards 
and let's go ahead and work on the dark underneath her nose, which is cast shadow and also the dark of the nostril there. Very cool. And that's really all I wanted to do. I just, I really just want to make sure that I get the structure. That's all from my original drawing. That's all it's about right now. Okay. I'm going to work on the dark of her lip there, her top lip. Okay, so now I'll just lift this up and then we'll just start doing maybe a little bit of freehand for now. Let's see, pull this up. So now you see I have a nice, nice, some nice hard edges, which would have been, I would have been able to do that, yes, with the airbrush alone, but I can do it a lot better, you know, using the tools such as you know, the uh, custom-made stencils. So now I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna work on her eyes a little bit. Now all this is to set up the, the pastels for next week. And let's move on over to her other eye. But like I said, you have to lower your air pressure when you're working on wood because you can get spidering a lot more easily. So please be careful. See how I'm hitting and moving, hitting and moving. You have to be super careful, otherwise you can get spider and you don't want that. And let's see, uh, Nameless says, have you given more details about the contest? That's coming, definitely. I'm just working out all the, all the kinks and everything out of it. So next week, definitely all the I's and T's are gonna be crossed. Uh, Emma Louie says it makes her crazy to see many people do digital art. I still like actual art for some reason. Actually, uh, digital art is, uh, you know, I'm traditionally, uh, and I understand where you're coming from. You know, I felt that way in the past, Emma, but digital art, it depends on the spirit you're using it with, right? You can do digital art with the same spirit that you would do a uh, oil painting or anything like that and uh, it's just it's just advantages right of doing the same thing it's the different side of the same coin now do people uh, abuse it of course and do they do stuff that pretend that it's more than it is yes and I agree that's where that's where the real disconnect is but uh, I teach my students digital art because it helps them with their own art. It helps me. Uh, the drawing for this I did with my tab. I did with my Huion tablet and a program called Krita. But I worked on the drawing in the same way I would have done it otherwise. But I definitely understand where you're coming from. Yeah, because. You know, people have been doing it a certain way for so long, but as long as they have that spirit, Emma, it's okay. But I really appreciate your point of view, right? Definitely. Have you tried digital art yet?
Definitely. Yeah, if you feel more comfortable doing it in the traditional way, that's okay. It's all good, right? And that's what makes up everything that is so cool, right? You know, it's, everyone has their own way of doing it. And I, and I respect that, definitely, Emma. And uh, so right now, as you see, I'm just, uh, just working a little bit more on, on her face. And just putting a little more detail now I'm still in the detail mixture and I'm working against the, the white of the board which is pretty stark but um, we'll get there it's just a longer process that's all now what's interesting the white of her eye here so we bring this down and we have the shadow now what's interesting is I have to build this up I can't go as dark as I want to because it will have wicked spidering so we have to be very careful and even though like we're working on wood we're not going to get that kind of uh, you know detail at this point Brad how you doing sir good to see you how's everything and Mike says, increase airflow into the room. Make sure vents are open. Cool, very cool. Uh, Nick says, digital artists miss out on that wonderful uh, xylene marker smell. <laughs> and uh, uh, Patty, how are you, Patty? Uh, thank you. Patty says, my ink is amazing. Thank you. Great to see you. Patty, all the way from upstate Illinois. I'm going to write you this weekend about your questions, Patty. And I have some really good answers to them. So, very cool. And Emma says she can see uh, digital artists having an incense that smells like... <laughs> That's funny. You guys are hilarious. So, I'm not going to push things too far ahead just yet. So, I have a couple of more uh, uh, custom stencils so I can just like map out the painting. And I always like mapping out the painting. Cover the, as much of the painting as you can as early as possible and gives you that whole tonal framework. So, right now I have the hair only. It's going to. It's not perfect by any means, but I do have to get it perfect where it uh, borders, where it definitely borders the figure. And right here, let's get that perfect. And just because, and then you can move it around as you as you wish. So let me put this here, and you see I have one magnet right there and I take another magnet and put it right underneath and I just repeat that process. And what this is just going to do is going to give me a tonal framework much like when your big building goes up and it has that framework. I like to have that framework. And I'm still going to be in with the detail mixture here, no difference. Let's see if I can get some smaller ones right here. Now I'm going to hit this area first and then I'll move down and move it around. Like I said, these things are not perfect. And so, you know, you do whatever you can to uh, make it perfect for you. Okay. All right, so now then I'll move over here and I'll kind of uh, switch it around. So now I'm just going to be about six inches away. I'm going to hit and move. I'm not staying in one spot. And I'm just doing a tonal structure. Hitting and moving. Notice I'm six... Why six inches away? Because when you're six inches away, the cone is bigger. When the cone is bigger, the little droplets of micro uh, ink uh, are further away and it creates a smoother, smoother application. Now 
and see how I'm not overloading the surface I'm letting that I'm letting it catch up so what I'm gonna do now I'm just gonna move this so I get the exact edge I'm looking for right here don't worry about going light light is right so even though it's painful you're like Tim this is painful don't worry there's a reason for it and I'm just going to move this back up and over there we go and we're going to do one more coat that's all nothing too crazy let me work on this edge back here so I can move this around okay so I'll, just, I'll do this more manually always always deal with the hand you're dealt right you know so whenever you are working and you feel like you know uh, you have to make a change or whatever. Just deal with that hand, that's all. For my students out there, notice I'm working on that triangular fossa right there. Remember that, guys? And once you create this beautiful hard edge, you're in good shape, right? So let's move on and let's uh, work on her neck. So. Let's see if we could do that, or maybe we can work on her dress. Let's see how that goes, shall we? Let's see. So when I'm working now, it's like I'm really involved, so just... Uh, you know ask your questions when I when I say hey you know anyone have any questions okay so let's do it that way I just don't want to break my concentration if I'm really into it right now so let's see so right now we're going to be working on this dress here so I have that covered and let's see do I have some pieces over here that will fit perfecto mundo okay that fits rather nicely Because this is white right here, so I want to make sure. Let me just move this big piece aside for now. A little shaving here. Let me pull that off. There we go. Get this as perfect as we're going to get it, right? We're not after perfect. We're after excellence, but not perfection. 
Okay, so you see how that's white? And then over here, we have this piece that is going to protect from any underspray. A little tedious but you know it's worth it so trust Uncle Tim okay so now I'm gonna spray as we're looking at her outfit we're gonna make sure we get that beautiful dark here so let's make this happen I'm gonna hold it down raise the air pressure how much ink do I have I have plenty of ink in here Sure, everything is operational, everything looks good. Because I want a nice, even application right here. So here nope right here that little bugger keeps going over there so let's just put this over here there we go Just have a little more structure and move this over. I'm kind of going to vignette her dress here a little bit. Nothing too crazy. I'm always going to come back, but once you establish a nice hard edge, it's almost impossible to get rid of it. So that's why this stage is really important for your pastel painting because without it, uh, it's just going to look ordinary, like an ordinary pastel painting. And I don't want my pastel painting to look ordinary. Sorry. Don't want it to be ordinary. Enough ordinary pastels out there. Let's not create new ones. And so, as you can see, now we have a nice little framework happening, which is great. And let's see what's going on with her neck here. So I definitely can see we could work on her neck and it's very dark. It's one of the darkest areas. So I want to maintain a beautiful edge here, right? So we're just going to, so let me see if I can answer any questions right now. Hey, Bob, how you doing? Great to see you. How are you, sir? And let's see who's here. Uh, let's see, any questions? Uh, Mike Deloach says, okay, talking about vapes and stuff. That's cool. Uh, let's see. So very cool. Good conversations happening out there. That's very cool. And um, let's see. Good to see you, Bob. That was a great portrait you showed me the other day. Oh, Patty says, what do I use for my templates? I use acetate. Uh, 0.4 millimeter acetate works perfectly. And uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun when it works well like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look for, I'm going to be working on her background, right? So there's a couple of pieces I'm going to be using for her background. So this right here, let's see how this goes. Is it on this side or is it over here? Let's 
see if I'm going to go this route. I may, I may not. That's the great thing. It's, it's my prerogative. Just get rid of the shavings here. You know what? I'm not going to worry about that. So that's not going to be a concern. Let's see. Okay, so. Before I work on her neck, let me cover everything and start to establish some value. Uh, a little dark value on her, on the background here. Why not? But I don't care if I'm not perfect here, but I care about here. So always make sure that, you know, where it meets the face, you want to be it, you want it to be absolutely positively perfect there. Other areas, you don't have to be perfect, but you better be perfect where the contours of the face are concerned. That would look extremely hokey if you, if we got that wrong. Okay, one down. This board is, uh, I think it's one eighth of an inch, so it's way too far away for, I mean way too thick for the magnets to work on a metal board underneath. But, let's make this happen anyway. I will experiment later and see if it does work. If it does, I'll go that route because it seems like it's a lot easier than this route. But that's the great thing about experimenting is you find out, you know, trial and error. And then when you take my class, it could be my trial and you don't have to worry about the error. So that's cool. So that's the great thing about taking my class. If you're on the fence about taking my class, I mean, think about it. I don't know how long I'm going to keep the mentorship program open. And if I do, uh, I don't know if I'm going to raise the prices. I'll grandfather those who are in the mentorship program right now. They can be grandfathered in. And so that means that their price won't go up. You know what I mean? But uh, the price of the mentorship for new students are going to go up pretty soon. So... I'm not saying this because, hey, I'm threatening. I'm just saying that it's hard for me to maintain. So it's an opportunity for someone to uh, take advantage of such a program. So let's see how this goes right here. As long as I have this edge, I'm going to come... Move this over just a little tad. There we go. And I'm just going to create the background. So basically, I don't want any underspray on the face. Maintaining my distance, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have some blotchiness, but not a lot. But remember, this is an underpainting for a pastel, so. I am un, out of detail mixture, so let me go ahead and put some more in. Mikey, uh, Mike Deloach says, at Timothy, sometimes the errors are where the best discoveries are made. That is so true. So very true, Mike. 
and you know you have to you have to expand our circle right there's no way around it so you know so that's why it's always important to make sure you try something new do things differently you know break barriers break rules and see if the rule makers were right or wrong right so hey mr deekman great to see you and Emma says she's seen some hokey pokey stuff. She's thinking of Elvis' portrait. This stage, this painting reminds of how women contour their face with makeup. You know, it's so true. Um, you know, it is. Hey, Willie, how are you? Great to see you. I'm so glad you're here. So we have Willie in the house and John Diekman. Uh I should do makeup artists, only if I can date the women. <laughs> and... Uh, Let's see, uh, let's go over here, so very cool. All right, so now I reloaded the airbrush and I'm just, I'm just gonna establish a dark. It really means nothing over here, but I'm just kind of getting a tonal fabric going. This is a dark side, but the neck, I want to, even though the, the neck is dark, I don't want underspray that I don't want. Actually, let's work on this area right here. Underspray is not your friend. not your friend okay let's lift this up and see how good or bad it looks okay so you see what's going on right now is that I'm kind of uh, I'm in an accelerated uh, movement right now and that's what you want to do when you're using the airbrush that you can accelerate things, and that's what's really important. Patty C. Patty C. says, "Kind of curious. Why did you use? Why didn't I use the? Because uh, good question. Because I'm working in pastel, Patty, and uh, there is no better surface than the my uh, my surface that I create with uh, marble dust and gesso, and it's best on this uh, wood panel." So, I want to use some of the techniques that I learned with airbrush, yes, but I also want to make sure that I am, uh, that I'm able to use that wonderful surface. So, it's my way of combining the best of both worlds, you know, which is really cool. Wendy says that could be arranged with dating the uh, the makeup artist girls. Oh, cool. So that's funny. Uh, oh, wow. So Wendy's going to Colorado. That's fantastic. I love to hear that. You deserve it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and erase some of these pencil lines that I had from the Sorrel paper. Remember the Sorrel paper, right? Uh, not exactly the best stuff in the world, but it was good to use. So what I'm doing is I'm just uh, lightening some of, let me get rid of these magnets, don't need them. So I won't need the magnets after today but I wanted to create this beauty, beautiful edges. And you really can't do that as well without the airbrush, so. I have the airbrush to blow away the eraser shavings, so airbrush does have a lot of really good little uses when you're working in pastel. So notice that I'm kind of uh, lightening 
Uh, this is a, uh, a Statler. It's a very soft gummy racer. And you can see it's doing the job, but it's not changing the marble dust surface too much. It will a little bit, but not too much. Remember, working in pastel, pastel is going to go over this stuff anyway, but cleanliness is always your best friend. Okay, so now we can see that we have the background kind of set up. And so let's go ahead and work on her ear. Her ear is pretty dark. If you squint your eyes, it's a little lighter than the hair. And then the dark is pretty dark. And you have the anti-helix right here with the triangular fossa and the two legs of the anti-helix. Most students know about that stuff. You're not just painting the ear, you know, you're not just doing something. It's, it's a very distinct form. So um, when you know what you're working on, it makes a huge difference than just eyeballing it. Eyeballing is good, but knowing what you're painting is much better. Gotta be careful you don't go too dark or too wet. So I'm just going very slowly. Because, you know, right now, this is all about getting value, right? Or at least getting a, a tonal structure. So I'm not going too fast because you have to build it up. But I'm not going to go much more than today. And then we go straight into pastel. But this is the tonal structure that's going to make our lives a lot easier. And let's see what I missed here. Patty says, thank you. You're welcome. Structure is important. I like color and details, but structure is where it's at. Very true, Emma. And let's see. Yeah, the ear has a few tones, definitely shades, and also a very distinct uh, anatomy to it. And uh, a lot of artists will disregard that or not learn it. And that's okay. I understand. There's a lot of years I didn't really learn it. But since I have learned it, it's, it's made a big difference for me. I'm just going to bring this edge over here. So some might ask, well, why don't you just go in with color, Tim? Well, because it's always best to solve. You know, do you want to juggle uh, three, uh, three chainsaws? Or do you want to hold one one at a time? I'd rather hold one one at a time than juggle three. So if I go straight in with color, then I'm solving line, I'm solving value, and then I'm solving color at the same time. Why in the world would you do that if you didn't have to, right? So the finished product for me is most important. So if I get there the same way, then I have no problem going ahead and uh, solving each of these issues separately. And let's see, uh, 
Oh, cool. Back to lap laptop. Very cool, Mr. Squeeze. Hey, Brayden, how are you? Great to see you. How are you, my friend? So we have uh, Winnipeg in the house, right? Is that is that? Are you in Winnipeg now? Is is that correct, Brayden? Colette says, don't forget to hit the like button, everybody. I appreciate that. And Nameless says he wants to struggle chains chainsaws, but then might lose an arm. That's right. It's all fun and game until someone loses an arm, right? Uh, Nameless. So right now, I'm just going to bring this over. And this, my friend, is what is called the zygomatic bone. And that's why we're seeing this hard edge right here. That's why we're seeing that. Oh, Edmonton. Very cool. Very cool, my friend. Oh, yes, so we got some Canada people in the house. Brad's in Manitoba, which is great. Um, it's turning to autumn, Emma says, so that's cool. So, yeah, I love autumn. I'm really loving uh, autumn. So, so love my Canada friends. So glad you guys are here. And notice how I can establish a likeness right out of the gate but I'm not wanting to that's the whole beauty of it I don't want to establish a likeness I just want to establish the tonal structure having to do with her anatomy So it's interesting how the paper actually works differently than when we're working on board like here. So it is very interesting when you make that shift, right? Because now I'm working on, on board, I have to, I have to handle the ink differently. There's no way around it. So you see I'm hitting and moving. I'm going perpendicular and not parallel. Down here, the only thing I'm really worrying about with the uh, underspray or overspray is the white of this collar. So I'm just going to be a little ginger, gingerly. So right here, this right here looks like it is part of the zygomatic bone. Right here, if you look closely, you can see how it goes in and up like that. That's part of the, let me make sure, just going to make sure that that's the case. So let's bring bring that in shall we so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an image so you can see so we're on the same page let's see image and we'll go to One moment, guys. Oh, 
Okay, so this image right here is really going to help us because it's very similar to her pose. So let's take a look at this together. So now you can see as we look at this and notice that we make this smaller. So if we bring this skull right over here, you can notice that there's this sort of movement here and that is exactly what's going on. And so this Let's go ahead and repeat that. So I can actually see it a lot clearer than, than if I was just eyeballing it. So it's so important to know anatomy because if I didn't, if I didn't refer to anatomy, I would not see these little variations and this structure and that would only hurt my painting. And this is where the overall structure of her is going to be. And the likeness is going to be when the smaller pieces fall into place. But these big pieces, that's, that's going to be the name of the game. So as we can see, the forehead is far from a uh, you know a smooth plate now you do have muscles but the main thing with the forehead are these uh, anatomical forms notice uh, right between the eyes uh, above the bridge of the nose it actually goes under so maybe I don't see it as clearly in the photograph but now I could uh, actually get that a little bit more so I can accentuate her, accentuate her anatomy and her likeness and take that to the next level. And let's see. Uh, we're just going to, let me get my pencil. Okay, so with her nose, this her cartilage comes down. So at this stage, I'm not after a likeness, I'm after an anatomical structure that if she was to step off of this painting, she wouldn't be a monster, she would be anatomically correct. And right here is the mentalis area and this is the mental fat which goes right over the uh, mentalis. And of course now we start 
working on what's happening with these values here. Remember here, the retro orbicularis oculi fat right there? If you become one of my students, you're going to learn this stuff. And you're going to be able to really see the anatomical forms. And it's almost like having a map before you get there, you know? And not one of those Google Maps that tell you turn right here, turn left, like an old-fashioned map. Thank you, Wendy, for hanging out. It's always great to see you. Take care. Ah, uh, Mr. Bob says he has to go cook dinner. Always a pleasure, Bob. Thanks for hanging out, my friend, and thanks for sharing that amazing portrait you did. Bob is doing some amazing pastel work using the airbrush and everything. It's just incredible. Really love it. And as you can see, just building this up. But look at the structure. She has structure. That's what we want. So I was able to take my original drawing and go ahead and uh, take my original drawing and then go ahead and transfer it with the Sorrel paper, which worked pretty well. It's just, okay, so I get a really nice one I could use my acetate shields with. It's really great. The drawback is the Sorrel paper is really dark and it doesn't erase as easily as as pencil so there's always a give and take no matter what technique you're using there's always a give and take I don't care what it is there's always a drawback I may go back and start erasing in just a few. Okay, let's go ahead and darken her eyes. Especially the white of the eyes is nice and dark over there. Sun Tzu, the art of war, every battle is won or lost before it's ever fought. And that's exactly when it, my approach to pastel is I'm going to win before I even touch pastel to the surface.
See how I can slowly build it up as I go one layer at a time? But if I went too dark, then that would have drawn everything out. Zavi says about how long does it take to complete an airbrush portrait in your mentorship program? Uh, that's totally up to you. And that's the great thing about the mentorship program is that it's so here's how it works. Uh, uh, Zavi, it's uh, two hours uh, a week, every week for uh, as long as a month. So a lot of months have five weeks. So the $100 is included in that. And then you get a group class that, uh, that go over different stuff like uh, anatomy and all that. And uh, so, yeah, sometimes two months, you know. I am coming out with something very soon. So I think something, so something that I think you're going to like, Zavi, and I will be announcing that next week. So hold off until next week. I have something special planned. So uh, I think you're going to find it really interesting. And I'm going to announce that next week. You know, some people, you know, might not enjoy the uh, mentorship. So I'm coming up with something that is going to be like an alternative. And I think it's going to be really amazing. Especially if you're interested in doing a portrait from beginning to end at your pace. So this is going to be very interesting. So I'm excited to roll it out, but I can't say anything just yet. So notice how she's coming out very slowly and deliberately. I'm going to put in her cupid's bow right here. So now I'm getting a little more specific in the shapes. But what I love about this is the overall tonal structure. So when I come in with the pastel, it's really just going to, like I'm going to have this structure and it's going to make my life so much easier and I can just have fun with painting. I don't have to worry about getting shapes and stuff like that because I already worked really hard at this stage, right? work on some of the structure on her nose, the side plane of her nose to be specific. And so Zavi says, thanks, that's cool. It's called uh, Sarau paper, S-A-R-A-L. And uh, it's very interesting. Uh, take care, Patty, hope you feel better. Uh, and I will, I will send you that email either today or tomorrow, okay? So that's great. And let's see. All right, so now I'm going to remember where I airbrush last. So I don't want to erase on wet paper. So now I'm just going to start erasing superfluous pencil lines. And you're really not going to get rid of these pencil lines. We're working in pastel. We have that going for us. But you'll lighten them, but you really won't get rid of them. So those pencil lines I no longer need. So what I love about using the acetate custom stencils is you see this beautiful edge that I have here. 
that's worth the price of admission right there. And uh, so, Willie, how are you feeling, my friend? How's everything going? See, where, where it's dark, it's no big deal, right? It's no big deal where it's dark. But where those pencil lines are, are in the light, like here, it's just not acceptable to have them too dark. So we definitely have to lighten them up. They are lightening up pretty nicely, so it's not bad. But it's not as convenient as pencil, trust me. Get ready when you're working with Sorrel paper to have a little bit of a struggle when it comes to pencil lines. Or Sorrel lines. It's a type of carbon paper. Okay, remember we're going over this in pastel, so it's no worries. But let's continue. Okay, and I don't think I need any freehand shields anymore, which is good. I'm just gonna work on our eyebrow a little bit. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, move that away and let's work on this area right here. We're going to darken this. So this right here is called the zygomatic bone. And, uh, or they also usually call it the malar bone, which means cheek. And that's where we get, I think malar is the Latin, which means uh, cheek. So it used to be called the malar bone. Now it's the zygomatic bone. And let's go back here and you'll see. See this bone right here? See that? It's coming down and right along the side there. You can definitely see it. So when we make this smaller and then we just move this over, we can definitely see where this the zygomatic bone is right here and it's causing this shadow. So that's exactly what's happening. It's creating a space because if you look here, the zygomatic bone or the cheekbone is further closest to us than the um, than the jawbone, and that's why you see that space. So going back, you can see why there's this dark shape right here. It's not there for no reason. It's there because of the structure, the skeletal structure. Now we'll also learn about muscular structure and also fat compartments, but this is how you construct. Uh, a portrait you're you're basically uh, when you're constructing a portrait you're working at it like you're you're building like building blocks and as a portrait painter if you do that you're gonna have such an edge over everyone else and to me that's what you want right you want an edge
But don't you see how the the likeness comes from understanding the structure of her as opposed to this esoteric kind of spiritual thing only? I do think painting portraits is a spiritual thing, but I don't think you can even approach it without the other, without having the science, the anatomical structures, and also what these anatomical structures do. So right here, you have this obicularis oculi, which is a muscle that goes around the eye, right? So let me show you that. So if we were to add this and bring in an image and let me show you if we do have one from the side. Uh, so right here, you have this right here and you can see this obicularis uh, oculi right here. It's a round muscle that kind of goes around the eye, both eyes. But you can see that because that's right below the lower eyelid. And that's what causes this shape. But then right on top of that, which is really fascinating, is that if you go ahead and uh, look at here, you'll see that there's something now remember the word malar in Greek or in, in Latin means cheek. So you can see on top of that obicularis uh, oculi is this malefat kind of looks like a chicken cutlet, right? So it kind of sits on there and that's what basically gives the uh, kind of the fattiness of our cheeks. So let's get rid of that and then we'll see how that applies to us painting, right? And let's see, and we can get rid of that. Okay. Let's zoom in and see where the anatomy actually uh, helps us. Okay. So here's a lower eyelid as we were talking about earlier, right? And then you have this obicularis oris, but what's actually going on top of that obicularis oris is this malar fat. And it's kind of sitting right on top. And that's creating this layer effect right here, going right on top. And then as the, uh, this face, this shape, turns towards the light, it gets lighter. And that's why we have these, this gradation of the darkest dark here, the shadow created by the zygomatic bone, the zygomatic bone itself, and you can see its shape, and then the malar fat right there. There's no mysteries here. Uh, the paint, the, uh, the paint a portrait is to know what your what your subject is and not just a person that's too like oh you must know you know you must know the the anatomy you must know you know what makes up a person that's the only way we're going to get there and then if we zoom out so here we have we can actually put in some of the value here of the obicularis oculi so Let's zoom out. So you see how we're actually constructing this cheek. There's no, there's no accidents. There's no like, you know, just look at it. No, you have to know what it is. You have to know your subject. It's the only way. I mean, if you want to get to that next level. So let's see any questions. Tim is the doctor of painting. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, Mr. Lang, thank you so much, my friend. You have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. And I'm looking forward to it, my friend. And thank you so much for hanging out, especially staying up so late, you know. 
Uh, Emma says uh, the zygomatic bone. And uh, Willie says, still can't see too well. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, uh, Willie. Haven't been able to paint like two months or longer. That really sucks. I'm praying that, you know, everything clears up, my friend. Uh, yeah, what's interesting. So, Emma, um, so I've always been a student of anatomy because I always have been painting the figure, you know, and, and painting... Uh, portraits and everything like that so I studied anatomy since art school actually since high school which I went to an art high school and you know with that you know I had to learn it but I always was wondering because I never felt that the uh, anatomy books were as complete and now I'm going a little bit deeper and that's helping a lot, you know? Let me see how much. Okay. Okay. Just darkening this area here. And now I'm finding that, you know, plastic surgeons are the ones who know about the shapes of the face, you know, meaning the fat compartments. And that is really important. And, you know, some people say you don't need to know the names of it. Yeah, I don't think you need to, but are you going to be better because you do know the names? Yes. Now, why? Well, if you know the names, the names will tell you what they do because they're usually in Latin and a lot of the names actually uh, actually have to do with what they do, where they are, where they attach. So knowing the names is really important, I feel. And also look how dark this little light there is. So I'm just going to darken that quite considerably. And I think the way that I'm working today, and I hope you do when you start your pastel painting, that you are just way ahead of the game. And if you were just to go in traditionally with the pastel sticks, and I just think that's so ugly. I would not want to paint like that. Remember, I was trained initially for my first six years as an oil painter. And then it wasn't until I studied with Harvey my last three years did I really start uh, learning about pastels. So, I like all my favorite painters are oil painters. So, that's why, you know, I adopt a lot of the techniques that oil painters use throughout the centuries. This is much darker. Just come over here like that. Okay, so it's 10.04, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, it only works with medical students. Mike says, I'm really digging your sternocleidomastoids. Hey, that's a great idea, definitely. Uh, uh, <laughs> Got to try that one there, uh, Mike, definitely. <laughs> so, guys, this is basically it. I'm going to work on her uh, a little bit uh, in between now and next week, but I won't do any pastel until next week. But you can see how I have a really, really nice... Uh, nice structure so when I come in and work in pastel I'm going to be in really good shape much better if I didn't do it the other way you know oh the xiphoid process <laughs> the maxilla which connects to the uh, you know zygomatic bone and then to the frontalis yes exactly <laughs> So cool. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. You guys are all great. I hope you have a great weekend. And I hope you ha take some time aside to just have fun and enjoy. And Emma, it was nice to see you. So glad you were here. 
And so, and I hope to see you again. I'm looking forward to that. And for the other new people who stopped by, I just want to thank you. Thank you for my Canada people. You guys are great. And Nick, good to see you. Everyone, take care of yourselves. Always a pleasure. Bye, everybody.